Hey everybody, Harris O'Malley from DrNerdLove.com, and this week I want to talk about a common, call it, misconception about dating. When you talk to people about dating, one thing that you'll hear a lot is that women have all of the power when it comes to dating and relationships, that they have the upper hand, and that it's so much easier for women out there than it is for guys. It's not true. But you hear it a lot. Now, I can already hear the folks who are getting ready to rant in the comments before they've even finished the video that this is just all hating on men or some other horse and nothing could be further from the truth. Because what I am telling you today is how, by changing your understanding the dynamics of dating, who has the power, when, and how, you will transform your dating life. By the time you finish this video, you are going to understand how power dynamics shape the dating landscape and how you can make this work for you. Because I am going to tell you exactly what you can do that will make you unbelievably more attractive to women than almost any other guy that she's going to be talking to. Because understanding the truth behind these common dating myths is going to set you up for more dating success than you can ever believe. Because right now, a lot of you are working from a handicap. You are coming into dating with a number of self-limiting beliefs that are not only holding you back, but are actively keeping you from connecting with the people that you're attracted to. And honestly, a lot of it is because so much of what guys complain about when they talk about who holds the power in dating are myths. They're bullshit. They're somebody else's fantasy theory about what women's experiences with dating are like. And not surprisingly, those theories almost always come from other men. That's part of why you'll see a lot of the same ideas repeated over and over again, from dating advice subreddits to MGTO and red pill forums to the incel community. If you listen to a lot of these ideas, you would be forgiven for thinking that women lived in this 24 hour stream of Madonna's Material Girl video with suitors lined up by the dozens dancing in attendance while waiting to beg for her attention and have the opportunity to just lavish her with gifts in hopes of being the one that she chooses for this evening. And when women point out that no, they really don't experience anything like that, and that dating's kind of a blasted hellscape for a lot of them. They'll get dudes who will very patiently explain their own experiences back to them and then tell them why either they're the exception or just that they're womaning wrong somehow. But let's talk about just what it is that we mean when we talk about power in dating. Because you'll hear all about how women test guys, and if they keep the upper hand in the interaction or the relationship, then they'll never respect you or be attracted to you. This especially comes up when we are talking about meeting women and those early stages of dating, that women control the tone and pace of the interaction, that women decide when and if there'll be a second date, or if sex is even on the table. They control the market Women, they control the market value of sex, and since they can get laid whenever they choose, they get to set the terms of the encounter, and guys have no choice but to play along. Basically, women have the power because they control access to sex. Men want it, they have it, and so they get to set the terms. But if you get right down to it, the power that people are talking about is that women get to choose who they sleep with and when. And honestly, the undercurrent of this complaint is, and that's not fair. This is a theme that comes up a lot, especially in pickup artist marketing. How to get past her rejection filter, how to bypass her conscious mind and make her desire you despite herself, how to pass her tests and get her attracted to you. A lot of it will especially focus on the fact that women may reject you without giving you a chance or getting to know you and that's just not right and that's not fair. The problem with this idea is that it ignores, uh, well, a lot. Starting with the fact that men choose to. It's just that they rarely think of it in those terms. But when you get down to it, men have dictated the terms of the relationship with every woman they chose not to approach and every woman they swiped left on. Every woman they've dismissed, every woman they've ignored, or just straight up paid attention to, they chose that they didn't want to sleep with them. I mean, hell, if you want to get right down to it, guys have power over all of the gay and bi men that they didn't approach or that they shot down. Now, when you bring this up, you will usually hear someone say that this wasn't choosing, this was just them going for the person that they were attracted to. So close! 
Just, just so close, so very close. That's part of it. Right off the bat, when you approach someone, you've chosen them. Now you're asking them to choose you too. It's double opt-in, like in-person Tinder. When we talk about approaches in social settings, bars, parties, so on, we fall to the usual gender dynamic that men are expected to make the first move. This is often expressed as a form of how women have the power. Guys traditionally have to initiate, while women just have to sit back and wait. But the fact that you saw her and made a move doesn't mean that she just showed up and waited for you to do all the work. Okay, yeah, a lot of times guys will approach women when they really did just show up but these are usually times when it's a bad idea to try to approach women. Women who go out and are open to being approached, or who are actively hoping to meet someone, put a lot of effort in, long before they ever got to the venue, and even more while they were there. Now, the most obvious example is the effort they put into their hair, dress, and makeup, but that's not where it stops. Everything from where and how they sit or stand with their friends to figuring out how to sit their availability without being too obvious about it is all part of the effort that women put in to being approachable. The difference is that this is effort that men often don't notice or discount because we don't have to do it. And so, therefore, it's not the same. It's straight talk. Straight talk. Right now, even in the enlightened year of 2019, gender roles are still a thing. They are still very much enforced, and they still say that men should approach, which a lot of guys will say is unfair. And honestly, yeah, to a certain extent, it totally is. That expectation can make it harder for men who are shy, who are awkward, or anxious, or who are the more submissive partner in the dynamic. Granted, these are all things that women face too. Now, it would be great if things were more equitable and women approaching was seen as unusual or out of the ordinary. But one of the things that gets in the way of more equitable treatment of men and women approaching is that guys tend to react badly to women who make the first move. More often than not, they assume that it's a joke, that it's a trap, or that she's far more interested in the person that she's approaching than she actually is. But here's the thing. Women do approach. Guys just don't recognize it when they do. We get hung up on the idea that women are going to approach us the way that we approach them, and so we expect something like this. Excuse me. Nine hours ago, I broke off the single most pointlessly agonizing one-way relationship of my life. I've given the matter serious thought, and all I want now is for some total stranger to nail me to a mattress for the next 14 hours. I will almost certainly cry all over you and call you by his name, but I assure you that my sexual frustration is built to such a fever peak that I will fuck you dry. What do you say? When in reality, it usually looks like this. Oh, hey. So, how's your night going? Incidentally, I've talked about how to get women to approach you in a previous episode, so if you're interested, go check that out. I've linked to it in the show notes, or you can hit the who's it in the corner. Now, the next assumption is that since men are horny and they're doing all the approaching, then that means that women can get laid whenever they want, and thus it's easier for them and they have all the power. Eh, not so much. First of all, there are plenty of women out there who have a hard time finding guys who want to date them. And these are women of all body types, all shapes, all sizes, all heights, all nationalities, all ethnicities, including conventionally beautiful women. But even if we leave them out of the equation, the fact that women get a lot of offers doesn't equate to getting laid whenever she wants. And getting a lot of offers isn't the benefit that you would think it is. It is less of a buffet of hot men to choose from and more just lines and lines of random dudes throwing dicks at them. Constantly. The fact that they are getting offers does not mean that it is coming from people that they want to sleep with, any more that some of the women who try to talk to men are necessarily women that those men are attracted to. It's a lot closer to being hungry, and people keep offering you this half-rotten, soggy sandwich they fished out of the bottom of a dumpster, and they're getting angry at you when you're not grateful, when they're trying to serve it to you, and they're even more angry and you won't take it from them. And this is especially when it's coming from people that she's not into. I've been approached by women that I wasn't into, and I've had a few who got right up in my business. And I can tell you, that 
is a really creepy feeling. And if that is creepy, it's even creepier if you are dealing with someone who is stronger or heavier than you are on average. Now, online dating isn't much better. Women will get their inboxes flooded with dicks, sometimes literally right off the bat from complete strangers when they're not getting otherwise just crappy first messages that ultimately lead them to deleting the apps in frustration. <laughs> This is why a lot of women are cold or dismissive or just unfriendly at bars or other social scenes. It's not that they have their bitch shields up and it's not because they're shit testing you. It's because they've had 500 dudes throwing dick at them and you might be the 501st. I mean, for real, see how talkative you are after just 10 dudes try to get you to sign their petition or take their mixtape when all you want to do is just walk down the street. It's not your fault that they're annoyed and closed off by the acts of assholes who weren't you, but this is still something that you have to be aware of because it has still happened regardless of whether it's your fault or not. And of course, there are guys who will argue that because women can choose and men have to approach, that means that guys have to jump through their hoops and play their game, which usually translates to things like buying her drinks and this makes you supplicating to her somehow. This gets called frame control, fighting to control the definition and context of the conversation or the interaction. If she asks you to do something and you do it like buying her a drink, then you have bought into her frame and now theoretically you're framed as a supplicant and she'll never be attracted to you because you're begging for her validation. Look, I never said this all made sense. The way that you were supposed to win this particular game is to push so that you have frame control. But honestly, pushing for frame control just turns into the conversational equivalent of a Twitter fight with one person who just keeps saying things like, yeah, well, that just proves that you're the real racist and they keep trying to set you on the defensive so that ultimately you forget what you were talking about. The problem isn't even that women in general don't do this. The problem is that in the unlikely event that in your travels you meet someone who does play games like this, even trying to fight for frame control is still playing the game when the real answer is not to play. There is nobody out there who is so hot or desirable that it is worth the time to play games in the first, and there was no better example of this than back in late 2018 when Instagram influencer Natasha Aponte attempted to go viral with a live Tinder experiment with several dozen dudes who she matched with on a dating app. Back in my day, this was a show on MTV. It was called Single Dad. It was co-hosted by Chris Hardwick and Jenna E. McCarthy. It was a thing for like a hot minute. After convincing her dates to show up at an event at Union Square, she then tried to get them all to take part in her dating hunger games. She swiped left on dudes if they had beards or they were Puerto Rican or other bullshit and then asked the remainder of the guys to do contests to win the opportunity to maybe date her. This was every pickup artist's frame control and shit test nightmare writ large and as in real life there is no way to flip the script here. Trying to dominate the game is still playing the game. The only right move would be to walk away which is something that guys can always do. It doesn't matter how hot she is or how much you want to f her, a willingness to walk away trumps whatever weird games a random person may want to try to play. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. No woman who is worth dating or sleeping with is going to play games like this. And the ones who do play these games are never going to bang you in the first place, no matter what you do. Straight talk, guys. You are more likely to win the lottery than you are to actually encounter this in real life. But hey, now at least you know what to do. So, if you've been paying attention, you may have noticed that the overriding theme of this is that there is no power here. Everybody has it and nobody has it. Because power is an illusion, a mirage. It's a shadow on the wall. The power that women have in dating is the exact same power that men have the power to decide who they want to date or sleep with. The only reason why it feels like power over you is because you want something from her and she doesn't want it from you. Because here's the thing, all of this power struggle bullshit 
is just the idea of who ultimately gets what they want, even if the other person doesn't want it. It's about trying to dominate, which is the opposite of what will get you laid. Hooking up with someone isn't about bargaining about market price or playing dominance games. It's about mutual interest, mutual enjoyment, and mutual reward. It's a collaboration not a contest of wills. Even the idea that you have the power by caring less uh, just ends up becoming a new and shitty way of justifying hurting people's feelings instead of actually engaging with them. That's not real power. The real power in dating, the one that will double your success, isn't control, it's empathy. It's understanding that a lot of the reasons why women behave the way that they do in pickup or approach scenarios is that for them, dating is often a giant flaming dumpster of bullshit. Putting yourself out there as a woman can be alternately frustrating and terrifying. Between the creepers, the jerks, and the guys who are just flat out dangerous, women understandably will have their guard up when it comes to meeting men. Even when it all goes well, there are still risks. Move too fast, move too slow, text too much, don't text enough. It all feels like a no-win situation. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, that's what it feels like for us. Yeah. Imagine how you would feel if someone who you were interested in dating understood that feeling and did their best to reassure you and try to ease those fears. Think of how amazing that would feel. Now imagine doing that for someone else. Because if you're the guy who understands this, who gets that dating isn't this paradise for women, then you are the guy who can ease those fears, who can make them feel better. This doesn't mean being hands-off and non-sexual any more than it means trying to defend her from other dudes or apologizing for other people's behavior. It just means that you understand where she's coming from, what her experiences are like, what she worries about, and now you can be the opposite of what she's afraid of. Truth is, this isn't that hard. You just have to stop assuming that you already know everything that there is to know. Listen to women's stories and experiences instead of relying on other guys' made-up theories. Read some of their books, especially their books about dating. Uh, you can check out my interview with Jenna Birch for a great place to start, and you will have a much better idea of what the right approach looks like. Because that empathy and understanding is like a superpower. It is like secret insight into how to act how to present yourself, and how to stand out from every other guy out there. Because the guy that she's going to choose isn't going to be the hottest, the richest, or the most alpha. It's the guy who she's attracted to that she feels the most comfortable with, the safest with. Because attraction and arousal can't exist without comfort and safety. Take the time to recognize what the real dynamics are in dating. And that will lead you to having real power and real success. Hey, thanks for checking out my latest video. So, you've just seen some of the worst opening lines that guys have had to offer, so now it's time to hear some of the best. If you are someone who sleeps with men. What do you wish that guys knew or said more often when you were meeting? Share your stories in the comments below. I would love to read them. I know my subscribers would love to read them too. We can all learn from this. It would be great. Meanwhile, if you would like to be part of a future episode and you have a short dating question you'd like to have answered on here, then call it in to 512-522-6513 and leave a voicemail. Or you can record it on your end and send the audio file to doc at drnerdlove.com and put for you two in the subject header. And speaking of calling, if texting is your weakness and using the phone is your vision of hell, then you need to check out my book, I Got Her Number, Now What? This is your instruction manual on how to get over your fear of phone calls and learn how to use texting, messaging, even DMs to become a dating Jedi. Links to buy it are in the show notes, so go check it out. And if you do check it out, do me a huge favor and be sure to rate and review it on Goodreads and Amazon. That is a huge, huge help. Now, if you're digging the series, you already know what to do. You've been here before. You've used YouTube before. You know all the routine. Hit the thumbs up, smash the like button. Be sure to share it all your friends. Yada, 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 yakety schmackety. However, if you are really enjoying these videos, and I mean really enjoying them, if you feel like they're, you're getting a lot out of it, you're finding that it's helping you, and you want to help support the channel, and hey, maybe fund some awesome new projects as well, 
then consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Starting at $3 a month or more, you get access to some incredible bonus content. Meanwhile, you can follow me on Twitter at, at drnerdlove. Keep up with the latest news by joining the Facebook page at facebook.com slash drnerdlove. And as always, hit that logo to subscribe, check out my latest videos, and I will see you here next time with more about love, sex, and dating. Later.